Wow, and it's gonna park us here. I was going to, that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> what the heck, this is crazy. <laughs> yep, more, wave to the robot. Yep, thank you. The robot is uh, happy to help. I would move through the intersection. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. What is happening? The humans are confused. Yeah, that's wrong. Nope. What are you doing here? It's gonna run into the curb. This video is brought to you by Joa, my choice for premium Tesla and vehicle accessories. Claim your exclusive discount with the link in the description below. What is going on everybody? Welcome to a brand new full self-driving supervised video. My name is Chris and full self-driving beta is dead. <laughs> the free trial of full self-driving supervised is going out to many people right now, even in Canada, all over the US, nowhere else in the world yet. Sorry, everybody outside of those two places. Uh, and we are testing it out here today. So I started on a totally new area. I mean, we've seen some of these places before, but I'm trying to make it more difficult because the system is getting a lot better as you hopefully can see here. So navigating with these pedestrians doing a very good job. So in the beginning of this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what you can expect from this system because I've been getting emails and the car's being a little slow here, holding some people up, but doing okay, uh, of people saying they're experiencing still weird things and, um, basically asking for a prepper of like, all right, I haven't really used this either in a long time or ever. What can I kind of expect? Now, it's called full self-driving supervised for a reason. Uh, Tesla's trying to be very clear that, yeah, the car can kind of drive itself from point A to point B. I have a lot of, oh no, uh, I have a lot of route changes here right in the beginning. So I'm going to be doing these as I talk. But um, uh, you can you have to supervise it even though the car maybe will take you a to b with you doing nothing uh, as you've seen so far i haven't done anything i just turned the system on and the car started driving you still have to take control if the car is going to do something wrong or honestly even if you're just uncomfortable even if the car is maybe going a speed you don't like or maybe got a little too close to something but might have been fine just take over it's no big deal uh, you don't have to push it very much um, i push it a lot in these videos because you're watching this video to see what the car can do not what i can do or what i'm comfortable with so much uh, although I always keep it safe here. So the main things to look out for, what I'm finding, and maybe we'll see it right after this right turn here, is in slower speed areas. So where the speed limit is below about 45 miles per hour or so, the car likes to speed. It likes to go more than the speed limit in these lower speed areas. Now around these pedestrians, it's doing really well in not doing that, but I've noticed it quite a lot. The opposite of that is happening in high speed areas. When the speed limit's above, say 45 or 50 miles an hour, the car likes to go just ever so slightly below the speed limit, which can be aggravating. But it, again, you're in for full control. It's very easy to just press the accelerator and have the car go faster. So right now, I just wanna make sure, actually I can do it with my scroll wheel. We are in average, yep. So I wanna be set in the average setting just for this video, we're gonna um, do that. Now these different settings, you can play around with them. I have not noticed much of a difference. I've done assertive and I've done average. I haven't really done chill because the car pretty much always goes slower than I'd like. And even in assertive, the car is going below the speed limit in areas where I would like it to go a little faster uh, and being a little too cautious. Now, the other thing I'm noticing a lot, which we saw kind of right in the beginning of this video, let's see if we see it here, is we'll get to, so we're stopping a little far back, not the end of the world. We'll get to these intersections. Now, this was great. We got to our zero and took off. We got out of everybody's way. That was awesome. The car knew it was its turn and it continued there. What I'm noticing though, is when you get to empty intersections, the car basically FSD like doesn't realize, I, I don't know how to explain it, but when the intersection is empty, there's no vehicles around, FSD is way more cautious than what you just saw where it takes its turn appropriately. So if there's nobody around, it's almost like the car is second guessing itself like, hmm, I don't see any vehicles, but is that because there's no vehicles or because I'm missing something? And it really will take forever to get through those intersections. Is it the end of the world? No. My complaints and uh, critiques that you're gonna hear over time are gonna get more and more picky as these people wave to a robot, although they don't realize that. Uh, my critiques are gonna get more picky and, and more intricate into the details, and honestly, a lot more into opinions. I'm gonna be saying things, and I'm not always saying the car is bad or wrong, but I try to give you some context of how I would handle a situation if it's different than the car. But I'm gonna say things and people are gonna be like, nah, the car did fine, or I'm gonna say it's fine, and people will be like, no, the car did wrong. And that's because these things are getting so kind of minuscule that it's number one, not the big of a deal. And number two, differing opinions, people will handle situations differently, even though legally tells us like exactly what to do. Pretty much no human is driving legally uh, to the T. So really nice job in these intersections dealing with these vehicles. And I'm kind of just doing a circle here really quick because there's usually pedestrians to contend with as you've seen um, in those two scenarios. Well, a few times already we've seen uh, some pedestrian interactions here. 
So we will go back through this circle one more time and then we'll continue into downtown where it's gonna get really busy as well. The other thing I'll notice, or I have noticed that you should look out for if you're doing these drives. Wow, we're slowing down here for no reason in my opinion. And are we gonna wait for this person now? Maybe, hold on, let me just see what's gonna happen here. Yeah, they're definitely going slow to kind of be like, all right, just go car. And the car is like, nope, I'm gonna wait for you. <laughs> very, very polite. Uh, I'm, I'm good with that, and especially in this environment with students and everything, that's definitely the right way to handle it. The other thing I've noticed is, whoa, what is this route? Oh, it's taking something different. All right, whatever, let's let it do it out of here. The car is a little wishy-washy in lane selection, so when a lane opens, uh, it seems like more so to the right. Again, we're braking here for really nothing. When uh, the lane opens, especially to the right, the car will kind of just ever so slightly move towards it. You'll even see uh, on the navigation, on the display here, the tentacle will move over to the right. We're hitting the brake again. I'm gonna report this. We're doing, doing a lot of weird brake hitting here. Where the car like is like it's gonna get in that lane, but then it fixes itself. It doesn't really require me to do anything, but it's definitely weird um, and something to look out for. And also when you're coming to intersections, wow, that person didn't stop at all. When you're coming to intersections with multiple lanes, the car will sometimes kind of go in the middle of the two lanes and it's almost like kind of snaking around, like, hmm, where do I wanna go? Even though like obviously you should be in this lane or this lane. Uh, so that's something that the car is doing as well. Man, we're going really slow around here. And my best guess is that it's, it's because of the pedestrians that are nearby. But again, this is, in my opinion, too slow. <laughs> so this is, I would go much faster than this. All right, let's get out of this area then, because we're not gonna do exactly what I wanted. And we'll go into uh, some pretty difficult downtown parts. But before that, it's gonna get uh, pretty easy here with some of the roads we take. So if you enjoy this, hit like, get subscribed. Let's uh, see what the car can do and see if we can get zero interventions on this drive. So way far back, we're slowing for these pedestrians. I mean, that's great perception. They were walking towards the road, but they stayed on the sidewalk. And the braking, again, I'm getting picky, but the braking was just a little too hard and a little too early for what I was seeing. We were nowhere near interacting with those pedestrians and the car's just being so cautious. I always err on the side of like, cool. Oh, there's like some weird thing in the road there, but we went around it. I always kind of err on the side of like, yeah, that's good that we're super safe around pedestrians, but again, personal opinion, sometimes it can be a little too much, but I'll always take that over, <laughs> of course, not being safe around pedestrians. So we have the stop here, but the mailman is stopping to drop off some mail, and yeah, Beto handles that nicely. That was, uh, even me, I was like, hmm, are they going to take off from there quickly? Should we just go after our stop? And that was great. Acceleration, braking are usually pretty smooth, slowing down for this speed bump. Wow, very slow. Uh, that's not complaining. Just, <laughs> I wouldn't slow down that much, but that's perfectly appropriate. So really pulling up to this speed bump. That's a nice one. That feels good. We got up to it, slowed down, and this acceleration back up. It feels really good. It's not the most consistent. The car's behavior in between speed bumps is changing ever so slightly, uh, but I don't mind that at all. Another thing I like to compare a lot of this to is if I'm actually thinking about a robo taxi. So do I think by December 31st, 2024, I'll be in this Model Y with no one else in here and I can turn the system on and go to sleep and it'll get me to work? No, no, I don't think that. <laughs> I think some people do, but that's where I'm at right now. I don't think that's gonna happen for uh, a few reasons. But if that were the case, if I was in this car right now and I could be texting uh, or sleeping or whatever, would I care about a lot of these things I'm commenting on? No, I would not at all. Going 54 miles per hour versus 59 miles per hour, who cares? I'm not in control, what do I care? But since I'm still sitting here, since I'm still responsible, since I'm still paying attention and looking around and, and making sure everything's going well, those are things that can kind of you know annoy you or bug you. Now in a video like this, I'm not gonna interfere with any of that because we're here to see what the car can do. But on my daily driving, I do, have a lot of, oh, you're going a little wide here. Let's see, it'll correct, hopefully. Very nice. So it kind of thought this lane was open and then saw the cones and went, oop, and just <laughs> moved right over. So that was, that was pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, on my, my daily commute and everything, I am doing a lot of intervening in terms of speed adjustments and some lane changes, especially on highway, which highway is not fully version 12 yet. Uh, but overall, these things are very minor. And it actually, I would say, comparing it to like an Uber or something I've been in, or a Lyft, drives better than most of my experiences. 
not to be negative towards anyone, but just the experiences I've had in a Lyft and Uber, for the most part, they're not that great. So uh, I would say this is a, above the average Uber experience for me. All right, so we're making this left into Carytown. We have some road work up here. I'm gonna get rid of that on the nav immediately to see if that will uh, allow the car to do a little better here. So last time we were here was the first time ever the car has been on the right side here and able to make it through without an intervention. Looks like we may be seeing that again here, but you got a lot of humans going on the right too. You can use this right, but then up there it's closed. So nice moving forward here. We're not stopping. Oh, are you gonna move over? Oh, beautiful. Sees this person parallel parking. Oh, yeah, a little confused. It definitely wanted to stay to the right. It didn't want to come over here, but that person parallel parking basically forced us to come over here, which apparently the car doesn't realize is a better way to go anyway. We have our left turn here, which shouldn't be a problem. Actually, in the past, that left turn was pretty difficult. A lot of these things that the car is doing well are kind of remnants of my old <laughs> routes uh, because I would pick routes with the car in a lot of trouble. And then over you know time, the car over updates and updates would get better and better at these routes. And I've kind of been evolving this you know test over time to deal with basically take out stuff that the car is doing perfectly, replace it with hard stuff, and then that hard stuff again becomes easy for the car. So. A lot of these are just remnants of that, but now the car is kind of nailing a lot of it. Now, even in version 11 for me for a long time, I feel like FSD has been great at the downtown stuff. I've had several zero intervention and zero disengagement drives in Ann Arbor, in downtown Ann Arbor. For me, the bigger problem is still rural roads because honestly, I think Tesla doesn't focus there as much. There's just not as many people. It's harder with really high speed cross traffic when cars are coming at, you know, the FSD is driving at 50 miles an hour and then cross traffic's at driving at 60 miles an hour. There's a lot less time to, a lot less time to figure out what's going on, uh, change your behavior, do what you gotta do. In downtown, things are so slow, especially for a computer, you can make a million decisions before this guy moves away from the stop sign or this pedestrian gets out of our way. So the car seems to handle all of it a lot better. So this will be a little different. We're gonna turn left up here when normally we don't. Now this is too hesitant. So you can see the hesitancy here for absolutely no reason. I'm trying not to do anything here for you. So I didn't touch anything and the car is proceeding. You probably were able to look at the display and figure out why the car was doing that, but I was just looking around at the pedestrians and I saw no reason to wait that long. Is it the end of the world? No. I mean, it added, what, three seconds to the drive, uh, but those are kind of the little things that you notice when you're sitting here just kind of waiting and observing. A ton of activity at this intersection. You can see the car. One of the best things, what something I've been excited about for this, even when the car was you know, not doing a very good job, is just the ability for the car to look everywhere always. It's looking in 360, 360 degrees around the car at all times with its cameras. It can see things that I'll never be able to see. It can see two things at once. It can see 10 things at once. And I just can't do that. And that's what makes me most, that guy just hit a crib over there. Uh, <laughs> that's what makes me most excited um, for uh, these self-driving cars. It's just how much they can see all the time. I guess I should mention, people have been saying that FSD is hitting curbs. Actually, it did for me too on, I think, 12.3.2.1 or what, I don't know what the update was. But <laughs> there's been so many updates of version 12 already. Um, yeah, so look out for curbs too. So really nice navigating that. That parallel parker to our left was not really in our way, but they did reduce the amount of road space we had to use to work with. Where are we going now? So we got a few turns up here. So handled that busy intersection perfectly fine. Wow, and it's gonna park us here. I was going to, that's that's pretty awesome. So I wanna kind of reflect on this for a second because almost always the car, I mean, every single time besides today, the car has proceeded through this road and then made a right turn up there at the stop sign, which it looks like it's thinking about doing here. Because look at the nav, that's what it tells it to do. But the car knows that we're at the destination and it parked before going over there. This is a parking spot. I could literally, well, that's not true. I'd have to pull up a little bit. but. I could pull up just barely. This is sick. The car's like, oh, you're not happy here? Then let's keep going. That looked really close to that truck. <laughs> I wonder what the roof cam looked like. All right, let's just get rid of this uh, and move on. But the car got us to our destination. It didn't get to the exact point where the map was telling it to go. It said, hey, this is this is where we're supposed to be. I'm going to park here. And then I just sat here and says, oh, you're not happy? Let's keep driving. I 
could have, if I was a bad, bad at parking, which, okay, I am sometimes, I definitely could have put the car in park and walked out. That was cool. So that could have been an A to B with a bunch of randomness in between that I put in there with me doing nothing but turning FSD on and then putting the car in park and being done. That is crazy. That is just, it's just crazy because one of my biggest kind of people are like, oh, what do you want to see with FSD? What does it need? Here's the, see how it's kind of wiggling around here. What, what does FSD need? What does it need to do? And one of the biggest things, one of the biggest sore thumbs sticking out this whole time has been, well, kind of start and end of drive. You, you pretty much got to get it onto the road. Not always, but it's best to get it onto the road and then turn it on. And then at the end, it's just going to either stop somewhere randomly in the parking lot or it's going to stop in the street if that's where the pin is and you got to take over and park. And it's like updated and now it can pretty much do that. And again, this has just got to get better. They just released V12. Now, if this was V12 after a year, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I would still be happy with this actually, but this is V12 like right away. We're going to have, uh, the future is going to be crazy. <laughs> I just can't. The future is going to, think of like the robot. I mean, I'm going to go crazy on a tangent here, but think of like all the robots being developed, getting all this AI stuff. And I just, yeah, it's crazy. So this person's going to cross the street and we're going to wait for them. Damn, that's, that is sick. She just, she wasn't even in the road yet, but the car knew that she was walking there. She was pretty much in my blind spot. Now I saw her because we were approaching her, but by the time I got to the area to do that left turn, she was pretty much in my blind spot. <laughs> what the heck? This is crazy. <laughs> the car waits for her. She points at her car and says, I'm getting in. And then the car continues driving. What is happening? This is, and that interaction was 100% organic. I mean, I guess half of the conversation was a robot, so it wasn't 100% organic. But between me and her, I gave her a thumbs up. She gave me a thumbs up. We're all good. This person was in the left turn lane and kept going straight. So that was actually their bad. They totally screwed that up and Beta adapted to it. Oh, I'm losing it here. I try to stay, I love, I love, I'm calling it Beta, it's FSD now. I love FSD, I've loved it for a long time, I use it all the time, but I try to remain very skeptical and very critical so that we can, as things develop, look back and say like, oh yeah, you were being a little petty then, but look, now it's fixed. I'm very excited and I, I'm just, this is insane. I can't believe all that that just happened. Here we got a parallel, par and I've still done nothing. This guy's parallel parking, we should move around him a little, yeah, thank you, yeah, look, come on. Come on, dude. It just doesn't get better. What are we seeing here? I'm losing my composure. I'm just a little too excited. I'm trying to remain professional, but I'm just, yep, more, wave to the robot. Yep, thank you. The robot is uh, happy to help. Patient. The robot has the patience of a saint. Another wave to the robot. Holy moly. <laughs> we continue immediately. You know what else is, I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit on attention here. You know what else is awesome about this drive? Yeah, it's zero intervention and I've had them before, but there's been almost no point this whole time where I've felt like doing something. There was one, so we're waiting for this, whatever weirdness is happening here, that's exactly what I would do. I would stop and be like, oh, what's this guy doing? And then be like, okay, I can go. And it quickly moved through it, like hit the accelerator, like let's get out of this weird situation. Oh, this is crazy good. Um, don't screw up now that I'm praising you. That's usually what happens. What's nice about this drive is not only has it so far been zero intervention, I may need to do something, you know, before we get to pinball pizza over here. There's been almost no times where I felt like doing something in past zero intervention drives. It's like, well, if I wasn't filming this video and I've been very open about this, I would have hit the accelerator there or I would have just turned or whatever. I wouldn't have let it miss a turn. This drive, there's been one main thing I can think of where it just was really slow moving through a stop sign where I was like, oh, I would hit the accelerator here. But other than that, like I haven't felt the need to really change anything. This is like doing a good job. And again, that's subjective. I'm sure there will be comments that say like, oh, this sucks. It looked stupid at this part or whatever. Okay. People are honking like crazy over here. I don't know what's happening. And we're like trapped now. So that traffic's not moving. We have a green. Now we have a red and it's no turn on red. What do you do? I would move to the intersection. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. That's exactly what you have to do. What the heck? In past versions, beta FSD would have got stuck there. 100% <laughs> would have been stuck there. Why is this guy backing up? There's nowhere. Oh, okay. I'm not going to do anything. What is happening? The humans are confused. I need to take a breath. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit so I can take a little break here. Okay. So that white, the, the white car was trying to get out. This guy's trying to parallel park. The human in front of me was trying to move out of their way. 
He's now trying to zoom through here way too fast, almost hitting a bullard. <laughs> he didn't almost hit it, but he was driving off. He drove off the road to do the maneuver he just did. We we're waiting too far back. All right, so now we're going to... Are we going to miss this light? Yeah, we're going to miss this light. I was not super impressed with that. I would have pulled up, and then when it turned yellow, I would have been able to complete it, but whatever. We're getting picky, like I said. All right, we're green. 100% I'd be moving up. You need to get out there so you can do your thing, but we can't go anywhere, so I'm not going to complain too much. Okay, it's starting to move. Yes, get up there. It does seem like it has a certain tolerance of time it'll wait before it starts trying to progress. Yep, go, go, go. Move up, move up, move up. Yeah, it's going to make it this time. You can't stop in the intersection. Do it. Oh my gosh. Okay, that was not great. That was very awkward, but it made it through. And legally, that's the right thing to do. If you've begun your... That's why I wanted to move up in the intersection. If you're in the intersection when it's green, and then it turns yellow, red, at least in Michigan and most other places, you can then complete that maneuver. I've said this many times. So that's why I want it in the middle of the intersection. So whatever. It, it wasn't the best move we've seen. But again, older versions of beta would have missed multiple light cycles there because once it's red, it would have never moved. And I was kind of sympathetic of that. You know, like, well, I get it. You don't want to go through a red light. But it did it awkwardly correctly this time. Wow. Nice stop there. This intersection also used to always be a problem, even with no pedestrians or anything. This is a very busy, please, someone walk in front of me. No. No, darn it. That is usually a very busy pedestrian crosswalk, and we've gotten stuck there before. Stuck to the point that I had to take over because Beta just wouldn't move. There were too many pedestrians there. This, it was screwing up even a week ago when I was doing this, and now it did it perfectly, so that's cool. Yeah, that's wrong. Nope. What are you doing here? It's going to run into the curb. Don't make me take over. I'm going to report it. I'm just acting like, hmm... I don't know what I'm doing, and everyone's staring at me, but that's fine. Well, we almost had zero disengagement, but I'm not going to make it now. I'm going to push the accelerator pedal here. It's probably going to try to drive. Yeah, it doesn't, like, realize the curb is there. So I'm going to have to take over. You failed me after all that amazingness. Tried to drive into the curb. Let's turn it back on. All right, now we can, let's at least move forward a little bit. Man, that's so disappointing. It's, it's tried that before. It basically thinks that's a right turn lane. And in the past, like last week, <laughs> it moved back over to be like, oh, I can't do this. And it did this turn correctly and now it messed it up. So that's unfortunate. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait and let it do its thing. So it is moving up. And this is where you need to be a little more assertive because there's room, just get moving before more people try to walk in front of you. All right, after I fixed it, the right turn was fine. Getting stuck there because of that curb uh, is pretty disappointing. But it's funny because we saw a human a little earlier in the video basically make that same mistake where they drove over a curb. <laughs> that was kind of the same, um, this, the same style in the road. So bonus points for not hitting the curb. Uh, negative points for getting stuck there. All right, I probably just fast forwarded through all that. It says navigation complete, and I'm like complaining about it stopping at that stop sign. But um, it's my fault because the navigation was complete. Well, that's a bad place for navigation to be complete. So I probably just fast forwarded through that whole intersection. But um, that I'll see, I gotta rework this route, like I've been saying. I, I'm working on it. I started, I started working on that new route like you saw in this video. Uh, so if you enjoyed this one, let me know down in the comments uh, what you thought of this drive. And you will see me and FSD in the next video and People are asking about the stats because I used to put the charts at the end. It's coming back. Maybe I'll have it in this video, but the file got deleted. So I got to go back to past videos and get the data. And it's kind of like a pain in the butt. So I haven't done it yet. But I will get the stats back because I'm very excited to see what V12 stats will look like compared to V11.